to everyone, welcome back to our podcast for this new week. It has been a couple of days that I did some podcast because it was a pretty busy week and I just don't want to jump in and do something. So this is your pastor Yeti and we're going to go through a new psalm in the secret place. I hope you had a fine weekend and enjoyed it. Whatever it was, I hope it was filling you with something new and the refreshment of your path with Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to read to you Psalm 31 and it speaks about deliverance in times of distress and the key verse is how great is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you which you have wrought for for those who take refuge in you. That is verse 19. I'm going to read the psalm now to you. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly unto my rescue. Be my rock of refuge. A strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit and deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to wordless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and you the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery, for I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant and save me in your unfailing love. Let me not put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let their lying lips be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all, and those who take refuge in you, in the shelter of your presence, you hide them. 
from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love. When I was in a city under siege, in my alarm I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy. When I called to you for help, love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him. But the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. We often go through times of distress when it seems nothing seems to be working out, at least if we, if we are honest with ourselves. When our plans go awry and dreams are scattered, a valley of depression often follows in which all hope and joy are gone. It is intensified when a sense of failure or times of affliction are accompanied by others' rejection. The reaction to a grotesquely deformed burn victim comes to mind as I read this passage or the attitude many feel and express toward. we can find so many people around us I was making it silent in my heart how easily can we be feeling that the sense of failure our times of reflection is companioned with those who are rejecting us. It may be the repulsion others feel toward a drunkard whose life has been dissipated by sin and iniquity and nevertheless the images of one who has become a reproach and object of dread to his neighbors everyone seems to be against him the gossip and slander literally take away his will to live are petty problems that leave us despondent would pale in comparison to the troubles and afflictions described by the psalmist. Yet in the pits of despair, he doesn't lose his confidence in the Lord, has his security and hope of deliverance. God is his refuge, a source of comfort, his rock, the foundation that is unshakable, his fortress and place of protection. He continues to trust in the Lord, confessing, You are my God, in verse 14. In spite of all that it, he is going through, he recognizes that his times are in his hands. Verse 15. God is in control and will deliver him from his enemies and the circumstances that beset him. When he pleads for God's face to shine upon him, and to save him, the appeal is based on knowledge of God's mercy and loving kindness. 
not the psalmist's own merit. The plea is for deliverance, but it is for God's name's sake, that his truth and integrity would be vindicated, and God would be glorified. He asked God to lead him, guide him, and rescue him that he would never be ashamed, regardless of what he is called on to suffer. In confusion, we find a beautiful expression of what it means to trust in the Lord. It is a confidence that God has stored up goodness for those who fear him and take refuge in him. Though everyone seems to be against us, our relationship with God is as if he has allowed us into a sacred, secret place of intimacy in his presence, where he shelters us from all the strife, the talk, the criticism and rejection of others. When we seem cut off from any source of support, when no one understands and we are subjected to conspiracies that would undercut our reputation, God protects us, preserves us and recompenses us for all we suffer. So the final admonition is to love the Lord, be strong, take courage and hope in him. Pray with me, Lord. We are so often attacked and criticized. It seems the conspiracies and slander to undercut our work and reputations never cease. Thank you and we thank you for guiding us and delivering us for your name's sake and that your purpose would be fulfilled. Help us never to be ashamed as we look to you as your stronghold, as our stronghold. Thank you for bringing us into the secret place of your presence and pouring your goodness into our lives in times of strife and conflict. We acknowledge our times are in your hands and you will preserve the faithful. We love you and take courage because our hope and confidence are in you. Amen. So, my dear ones, the final admonition is to love the Lord, be strong, take courage and hope in Him. May the peace of God be with you and stays with you. And may the Holy Spirit be your counselor as you walk your journey with Christ. Amen. So, I wish you a very good day in which time frame you also are. I hope that there is hope and I hope that you take courage and hope in Him. Bye-bye. And God bless.